welcome back to my channel. Um, so I'm excited to have you guys back because I have lots that has been going on in my life that I am excited to share with you. Um, and yes, I will explain the uh, new hairdo. And uh, it's got kind of a cool story that goes along with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make this into a two-part video. Um, the first part is kind of going to be a factual um, version, a factual informational video about um, a health issue that I am working through right now. And then the other part is kind of going to be uh, my experiences in learning to cope and manage this new lifestyle that I have to have for dealing with this condition. Um, so I have PCOS. Some of you may have heard of it before, others may have not. Um, it is a uh, women specific condition, I guess you want to call it. Um, I sometimes qualify it as an autoimmune disease because it is, you know, your own body kind of not regulating and kind of attacking you and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not planning on being that technical with it. Um, so, um, I was diagnosed with PCOS uh, when I was 19, 20. It was kind of in that um, year time frame. And when I was first diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, I had a doctor who was not the greatest at a bedside manner and or explaining things. I kind of got terrified. Here I am at 20 years old. They're like, well, just so you know, this is, you know, a hormone issue and you may not be able to have kids. And if you do, it's going to be really hard to conceive. And, um, you know, you're going to really have to work on weight loss and you're going to have to work on, you know, eating better and you're going to have to be on birth control forever. And I'm like, whoa, like I'm 20. Like I, I haven't even decided what I want to do with my life, let alone if I want kids or this whole health issue thing. So I kind of was a gopher and I hid in a little hole on the ground and just pretended that I wasn't diagnosed with it. You know, I stayed on birth control because otherwise I wasn't going to have a period at all. And I had major mood swings. So that was a benefit to everyone else in my life. That I did that. I wanted to keep my friends and family from not hating me forever. So every so often I would get on a kick and I'd be like, okay, fine. You know what? I need to be better. I need to, you know, take care of my health and I need to get on a diet and get things under control. I tried Weight Watchers. Uh, that was not successful in any way, shape, or form for me. I, that was too free-spirited for me. I was like, okay, whatever, I can eat whatever I want as long as I have points connected to it, <laughs> which is just not good for me. Um, then I worked on the prism, not prison, prism, like the glass that shines the rainbow through it, uh, diet. And that is basically kind of like a cut everything out, detox your body, and then add good things back into it. And you count every calorie that goes in your mouth. That one was actually pretty successful. Um, I was able to lose, you know, about 20, 30 pounds, but every time I would hit this certain weight, I would plateau and it was not enough. Like it was still not a good way for me to just stay at. Uh, it was definitely still more than I should be. And so I would get so frustrated and irritated that I would just give up. I'm like, fine. Why do I need to do this anyways? What does it matter? You have one life to live. Just live it up. And who knows if I want kids anyways? I don't know. So I kind of gave up on the whole thing and was like, all right, fine, whatever. So when I moved out to Arizona, I was like, okay, you know what? New life, new me. I'm going to kind of get things under control. So I did um, have the advantage of working at Lifetime Fitness, and I was able to do some really cool testing. So I did like a metabolic testing and found out that my metabolism is zero. <laughs> 
And people with PCOS have a metabolism that is like a sub-basement level. Like we need a fraction of the calories that a standard person needs to survive in their day because our body just does not do much with it. So then they had me on this tailored workout for my, you know, heart rate and to work with my metabolism and, you know, gear all those things together. And I did that. And again, plateaued at the same exact weight changed eating habits, changed lifestyle, worked out three times a week. I mean, like I was doing everything humanly possible. And that lasted for uh, about three, four months. And it just, I was done. I was like, you know what? I really just want to live my life. And I want to not have to sacrifice for things and not get any results. So from that point on, I became the world's top notch anti-workout person. Don't ask me to go on hikes. Don't ask me to go for a bike ride. Don't ask me to do anything physically exertive because I'm just not interested. Not interested. Don't care. No way, no how. Just don't care. I'm going to live my life free from all of that. And... Yeah, so that's kind of how I've lived my life up until this point. And so, um, part of the story I'll, I'll go over in um, the second part, but there was a pivotal moment in my life that changed my thinking on that. That there, I was ready to be able to accept a challenge. And I was ready to be able to make a lifestyle change. So the first thing that I did is I did tons of research on PCOS because I had to know what I was up against to be able to fix it. And because I really didn't have any information, I didn't do any research, I just didn't care. I was like, you know, we'll just pretend that it's not a thing. I'm doing what they told me that I need to lose weight and I need to eat better. And those were the guidelines that I followed. Well, the more that I did research, on PCOS, the more that I realized that I had been doing things right and wrong at the same time, but I was not doing them together or at the right time. So it's like I would get kind of the benefits and then kind of not the benefits on several different scenarios. So I have been doing a lot, a lot of research on PCOS. And there were huge things that I found out that gave me so much freedom. So part of it is um, that your hormones are not in balance and they can create an environment where your ovaries create cysts. Another part of it that I didn't even realize was a thing is your pancreas. Your pancreas is what creates insulin and insulin is what your body uses to feed your muscles. So when my body creates insulin and it gets real overexcited and it creates a whole bunch of insulin and it's floating all around, my body doesn't really know what to do with it. So it knows it's important and it knows that we need to keep it. So the thinking of my body is, we'll keep that around. We're just going to store it over here in the fat cells. And we're going to put those fat cells right around her gut and her hips. And we're going to give her the best muffin top ever. And it's going to be awesome. So here I am walking around with my little, little waistband of insulin that my body's not using. And my muscles are not eating. So now what do you do? Okay, so you know, you know the symptoms. Ooh, mmm. The part that really made the biggest impression on me is there are so many hormones in our body that you have no idea what they do. Like people just think that women hormones and it's your period and you know you get cranky or you get acne. There's legit hormones that do so many jobs in both men and women. And, you know hormones are not just strictly for women. I don't know why I think that or why I think other people think that but case you think the same way I do but there's a hormone that when you eat it is a really long name 
but I believe the acronym is CCA or CCH. Um, but it basically tells your body you're good. You're hung you're not hungry anymore. Like you've eaten enough. You're full. You're done. And my body is kind of really not sure how to use those. So it doesn't tell me that I am full. So by not telling me that I'm full, I'm continuing to eating because I think that I should. You know, my mom used to always tell me that I was starving or I was stuffed. There was no in between. I was starving or I was stuffed or I was stuffed or I was starving. Like there was no, I think I'm kind of hungry and it was like, no mom, I'm starving. Or, oh my gosh, mom, I'm so stuffed. Well, part of that was is that all of a sudden my body caught up and went, whoa, like, dude, you have eaten enough. And the other part was like, wait, no, are you sure? I think we're still full, or we're still hungry, not full yet. So I would have this, like, raging war of hunger and fullness for most of my life. And... It explained so much. I used to feel like I was this failure that had no self-control. That I was like, how am I inhumanly possible of being able to control how much I eat? Like, why do I feel like I eat so much more than other people around me? Well, it's because I have this thing that doesn't tell me that I'm full. But I can't take that as an excuse anymore. One, because I know about it. And two, because seriously, two to three helpings at dinner, don't you think you'd be full? I mean, like, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to be like, hey, you know, you've eaten quite a bit. I think your stomach's got food in it. I don't think you're a bottomless pit. Like, I think you're going to be okay. And realizing that helped me change my mind on when I was hungry. And really evaluating, okay, so I just ate 10 minutes ago. I don't think I'm actually hungry. I just don't think my body knows that I'm not hungry. And it's been a big help in realizing that it's not just like, oh my gosh, how am I still hungry? I have been eating all day long. So yeah, there's that. The other thing is, is that people with PCOS tend to have a lot of inflammation problems. That is me. Yep, example A right here. Yep, A for excellence here. Uh, yeah, my mom affectionately calls me the walking inflammation. Everything that my body gets upset about, it responds in inflammation. I have overactive hives on my skin. I have joint issues. I have, you know, inflamed tear ducts so I don't produce enough tears. I mean, like, legit anything that my body's going to do is going to be an inflammation response. Inflammation is the way that I do business. So knowing that was a huge help too, that I'm not feeling like an 80 year old man when I'm 28 for no reason, that this is part of it, that I'm not crazy, that I probably don't have arthritis, although having PCOS can lead you to having secondary autoimmune diseases. So who knows eventually in some point in time in my life I may have that, but I don't. Right now I've been tested for it multiple times. So. Those are kind of the crash course issues with PCOS that I found that I was like, oh my God, explain so much about my life. Like my mind was blown when I understood this. And I found two amazing websites that are by women who have PCOS and are nutritionists and have gone so hardcore in finding um, supplements, meal plans, educating women and I will put um, the links to those two websites down below for anybody who would like to investigate those. These women are very knowledgeable and they're very honest um, which I truly appreciate. Um, and one lady has some amazing courses that you can take on meal planning and really understanding and working with dieting with PCOS and the other lady is great for information. She's made her own supplement company um, that is geared specifically towards women who have PCOS. So that has been such a huge help to be able to have those women um, and their knowledge in these things. So the lifestyle changes that I am making, <sighs> there are five of them. 
five lovely, lovely things. The first thing is that I am doing no gluten. So no wheat, no rye, no barley. I also do not do very well with oatmeal, so that's on the naughty list too. Now, I do want to preface this by saying this is my lifestyle change with PCOS. Every woman, woman, women, woman, woman is different. And each body is different. I have been doing so much research and reading so many blogs and different conversations between women and some have issues that I don't have and others have never dealt with the issues that I have. So, you know, you really need to tailor things to you as a specific person. And this is just an example of what I'm starting out with. I'm sure as things evolve and I even things out and I get better at things that things will change and I'll fine tune things. But this is where I'm starting out at the moment. Uh, so one is no gluten. Um, two is no prepackaged processed foods. No canned, no boxed, no Hungry Man, no Jen Jenny Craig, no nothing that has been pre-made for consumption. That I am doing 85 to 90% of all of my cooking at home. I know exactly what is going in my food. I know the exact, you know, caloric value of everything. I know every type of ingredient, whether it's organic, non-GMO, like I know exactly what is going into my body. And that is the most important thing, I think, for dealing with this, is that there are so many hidden pitfalls that just knowing that you're cooking your own food is going to be huge. Um, so three on my list is no sugar. I am only doing sugar that is present naturally. So fruit or other things that have natural sugars in them is not a problem. Things that are naturally occurring, so like, you know, orange juice. Orange juice naturally has some sugar in it. Um, pure apple juice, you know, things that are actual foods that have sugar created in them. You know, I feel like peanut butter and almond butter and stuff like that, they have their own natural sugars. The only sugars that I am using to add into recipes or meals is pure maple syrup and raw um, honey. And I'm starting with those two. I'm doing research on other ones that will be okay for me to be able to use because you know like I said this is a lifestyle change it is not a diet that I am doing for 10 12 18 weeks this is changes that I'm making for the rest of my life this is what is going to be happening for the rest of my life until the day I die so I needed to make changes that were realistic things that I could continue to use and have forever and so I'm still doing research I know that there are alternatives to sweeteners and I need them to just not have any effect on the uh, you know blood sugar levels in my blood and how my body responds to them and how my body breaks them down so still doing some research on that and you know side effects that each one of those will have and if it's worth it or not or if it's just going to be honey and maple syrup. Who knows? I'll keep you updated. Uh, four is I am counting every calorie that goes into my pie hole. This is one because I have a visual and mental log of everything that I have eaten. When my fitness pal tells me, hey, you have 200 calories left because guess what? You've eaten 1,000 calories today. And my body goes, no, we're starving. I can go, no, you ain't. You are not starving. You have had 1,000 calories today. You still get an extra 200. So you are not starving. You can have a snack or we can have a salad or something that fits within this 200 calories, but you're not starving and you're not getting, you know, chicken and dumplings. Okay, it's just not happening. And that is to be able to have that mental distinction and also to be honest with myself. That I need to know 
that I'm making the right choices. And if I have it written down, because my mom has a link to it as well, and she checks it for me, and she's my accountability partner, which, side note, rabbit trail on this, is one of the most important things when you are doing a change like this, is to have a support group. Whether you can have somebody that is your cheerleader, your coach, somebody who's on the sidelines that is cheering you on, the person that can be so honest with you and call you out on your shenanigans, which is my mother. She is my cheerleader and she's my coach. Uh, she's the one who tells me to knock it off and or to not make something bigger than it needs to be or to just tell me that I'm doing an amazing job and that, you know, sure, the sugar withdrawal headaches suck but it's okay. The next day, they will get better. And the next day, they'll get better. And the next day, they'll be gone. You know, you really need those people in your life that are there to cheer you on. If you have a person that you can find that can do a lifestyle change with you, that's even more amazing. Those are harder and fewer far between. But, you know, finding people who are cheerleaders that don't need to necessarily do the thing with you but can encourage you along the way is going to be a huge help to you. So my fifth and final thing is taking supplements. With PCOS, there are so many ways to naturally help yourself. As of right now, I need to stay on birth control. I need that to be able to keep my depress depression at bay, which I forgot to mention is another side effect that people with PCOS can have, is, you know, serotonin is another hormone, and the lack of serotonin or the lack of production of serotonin is what causes you to have some depression. So, knowing that, and then going through hormone issues, and a period and just having this massive crash and uh, would lead to me being a horrible person to people for oh 10 days um, is not good it's not good it's not fun you know it really ruins my life for a while and I had made the judgment that I wasn't going to let that happen if I could really make a change so you know there's lots there's lots of discussions on PCOS and birth control and not birth control. Currently right now, that's a weapon I'm using. That is something that I'm using right now because I need to know that these things are maintained and I don't have to worry about it right now. That's something we can visit later. So currently, I am taking supplements and I will actually grab them and I will show them to you so that way you guys can see them. One second. Okay, so now that I'm back with these things, I feel like I need to tell you these videos are not sponsored. I have purchased these all with my own money. I have done research on the companies for my own sake uh, because buying vitamins and supplements is so important that you buy good quality um, because the better that the vitamin is made and the purer that it is without other compounds, the more beneficial it is for you, obviously. Um, so, a company that I really like and I stand behind is a company called Shackley. Um, my mom actually used to be a rep for Shackley and um, it was a, you know, household name for us for a long time. They have great protein powders and other supplements. So that was one of my go-tos when I started doing this because I knew the company and I really um, agreed with their quality and all of that. So, um, I have their Shackley Vital Lee. This is their multivitamin and this is plus iron um, because that is something that with PCOS you need that extra vitamin and mineral in it. Um, it also has a great um, list of all of the different vitamins and then it also has a section of minerals and um, metals and stuff that you need. There is one on here that um, is called chromium. That is one thing that they say is a huge supplement that we are missing as people who have PCOS. And that, I guess, you can also find in seaweed. So you can either eat seaweed or you can have uh, a multivitamin. But this is my Shackley multivitamin. And here in the back, 
Da -da -da. Um, I don't remember how much this cost, but it has 240 tablets. So it'll last me for a little while. Um, another thing that I am taking is a B complex. Um, B complex was another important thing that they found for um, PCOS because it has uh, folic acid. Folic acid was something that was really important. Also, there are other things that your body is lacking, like vitamin B, um, Bs. I know that there's three or four of them. Um, but they also help encourage good mood, energy, and helps your body break down um, energy better. So this is the B complex that I am using with Shackley. And again, it lists on the side here um, the different components in it. Um, another thing I am doing is this is calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D all in one. I have done tons of research on calcium and magnesium and you should never just buy calcium or just buy magnesium. You need to have calcium and magnesium together for them to work together. Like they need each other, a symbiotic relationship to be able for your body to digest it and use it. So that was one plus that I really liked this. Um, I got this at High Health um, and this is their exclusive brand. Um, it is GMP certified, which is one thing that I do like to look for because I know that it has been tested. I don't know how great the quality of this is, but um, you know, I figured it was something to start with and I can always change it later on. It's not gonna hurt me to take something if it's not quite as potent as I would like it to be, um, but it was a good place to start. I like that this also has vitamin D in it because that is something that um, on the top three things that PCOS people should be taking is vitamin D. It also gives you the correct ratio, which I believe it was a thousand, a thousand IUs per 50 pounds. Um, so that way you are not overdoing it. You know, there's some that are like 10,000 IUs and that's just too much. So you want to actually make sure that you're taking a dose that is something that your body can use. Because if your body gets too much of it, then it's just going to flush it all out and be like, whoa, it's too much. Don't need to do this. So this is the one that I am using. And again, here it is on the label with all of the different additives in there. The third, uh, fourth, because I can count, uh, the fourth and final thing that I am doing is Udo's oil. Dun, dun, dun. This is a plant-based 3, 6, and 9 omega oil with DHA. Um, I have not done tons of research on DHA and what it breaks down and why it's super important for people with PCOS, but I know that that was on the top five list as well um, for things. And I was like, hey, I can buy it in this bottle. So why not? So I really like this oil because it is a cold pressed oil and I actually mix it in with my chia seed pudding in the morning. It doesn't have a strong flavor. You can put it in with smoothies. You can add it in as a dressing. You know, it really doesn't have a strong flavor because it is plant-based. It's not fish-based. So it doesn't taste like fish. It doesn't smell like fish. Um, it's more kind of like buttery and oily. Um, what are the oils that are in it? Uh, flaxseed oil, sunflower oil, sesame seed oil, primrose seed oil, agile seed oil, coconut oil, rice bran oil, rosemary leaf extract, um, and a few other plant extracts in it as well. Um, so this is all plant-based um, because I feel like the ones that are made from fish are from fish farms and I just don't feel that that is the best quality. Again, I don't want to start controversy over this. It's just an oil. Uh, it is also non-GMO, which I really appreciate. Um, and I also have done lots of research on uh, this company and it's, it's a good one. So those are the supplements and such that I am taking in my day. Um, and 
you know, it definitely helps. I take it all in the morning because, uh, you know, B-complex gives you energy, so you don't really want to take energy right before you go to sleep. And I learned that vitamin D, in case anybody else is taking vitamin D before they go to bed, it turns off your melatonin for a good two hours. So you don't feel sleepy, you don't really want to go to sleep, you're not feeling quite as tired, well, you're turning off your melatonin. So I don't know if you can counteract that by like adding melatonin, I, I just feel like it's a lot more work. So I take everything in the morning after I've eaten breakfast, um, because most vitamins you should take with a meal. One, because they just work better that way, and two, because then you don't get a sick stomach. Not good. So, yes, um, that is my education today for you guys. Um, yeah, drinking lots of water, um, and really making sure that I am switching out foods and lifestyle stuff like that. Um, I'm going a lot more in depth with the food that I am eating and recipes that I'm making in my blog, um, Chelsea's Korean Adventures. I will put a link to that down below um, if you guys would like to follow along on there. That's something that I'm updating a lot more frequently just because it's kind of like, you know, recipes that I'm doing or things that I'm struggling with that day and I'm just kind of thought processing it out in writing as an author. That's what I tend to do. Um, but I am trying to come on here on a weekly basis, really try and get you guys updated on how things are going, what things are going on. Um, but like I said, this is a two-part video. So this part it was going to be specifically about the PCOS, what it is, um, what the symptoms are, what you can do to help with it. And the second part is why I decided to go on this journey and the story that I have behind that. And the baldness shaved head I guess I should stop calling it bald because it's not bald I have hair bald I guess would be like if I took a big razor to it anyways shaved head uh, so stay tuned for that um, I may be updating more regularly on these I don't know I'm not gonna make any promises because I made promises last time with whole like days that I was gonna be doing things and I've just learned that my life cannot be that specific that every day needs to be spontaneous Saturday because who knows when a video is coming out. But I love and appreciate all of you. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch this. I hope that this informs you, encourages you, and motivates your health issues and to really, um, you know, make the change in your life to better yourself and to better your health. Um, I hope you guys will stay tuned to my next video, which is kind of more of a story time life about me. Why the heck am I deciding to do this with my life? You'll find out. Bye, guys.